Good morning. <clears throat> Guten Morgen. Megan de Numaga. Konnichiwa. Bonjour. So I made this illustration yesterday and I tried to make a video with me holding it up, but all you saw was a white piece of paper. <laughs> because the sun was coming through the window and I was in front of the camera rather than behind the camera. So I was talking about this illustration with zero visual because I'm so smart. <laughs> so I decided to uh, do it this way. I can also see how much time I'm taking up, so I apologize if I'm a little bit long-winded and I'm not a speaker, I'm not a teacher, and do not follow me, okay? So this um, beautiful artistic <laughs> took a lot of skills <laughs> illustration. Uh, I hope that I explain it uh, to the best of my ability and um, again I'm not a teacher so I just do the best I can so I was thinking about uh, that narrow gate and how those of us who are part of the body of Christ is being refined by the fire okay and those that are tears the the those that are not born again in Christ they're being bundled and burned so the fire is being used in both descriptions okay now the fire is spiritual okay as those that are born again in Christ are being refined by the fire spiritually because we have his Holy Spirit and we're growing and learning and making mistakes, those that are not of Christ is dark winters happening spiritually. Their lights are going out. The light of Christ is not in them. They're being cut off spiritually. Again, this is a spiritual warfare. So in this illustration, I'm going to point Ooh, my fancy pointer. <laughs> this narrow um, line, think of this as the, the, this narrow gate, okay? And at the beginning of my walk, I made a lot of mistakes, a lot. I didn't have a Christian 101. I didn't have a Christian background not really. I didn't know scriptures at all, really. And so I went on YouTube, listened to some testimonials, and um, indoctrinated myself in other people's ways, man's ways. And what they said was, this is what it looks like to follow Christ. This is what it feels like. So down here, as you can see, you know, I, I made it going one way or the other. Um, it's not a left-right paradigm. It's just, you know, two different directions that are not um, walking on that narrow path, that narrow gate. So in the beginning of my walk, I veered far this way <laughs> or far that way. I was running to and fro, basically, had no clue what I was doing. And all glory to the Lord and his Holy Spirit that you feel convicted. Um, you feel like something's not right, that he's knocking on your door. He's calling out to you, telling you to get your spiritual bread from him alone. So by his patience... And by his grace and mercy, you repent and you come back to that narrow gate. And as you're walking along some more, months, years, whatever, 
I put another line on each side because you're going to make mistakes. You're going to fall short. That's part of growing and learning, okay? So here I went again, I went left or right. It's not following Christ, whatever I was doing was in vain. But you notice that I made these lines shorter because I didn't fall so far this time. I have more wisdom and more understanding that the Lord has given me because I humbled myself, because I, down here, because I repented and came back to Christ and then continued to walk with him, I made a another mistake, but I didn't go so far because I learned from the previous mistakes that I made. So as I make that mistake going one way or the other in vain without Christ, he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. The, the Holy Spirit convicts you again, but not in an unloving way. You, when you realize you've made another mistake, you're humbled and you're so grateful that the Lord it has patience and saying, come back to me. Put me first. So you repent again from making that mistake and you continue to walk with the Lord. And then here we go again. <laughs> I make another mistake, whatever it is, being in my flesh, not walking by the spirit, feeding the beast. Your flesh is the beast. So here I go, going astray one way or the other, not walking with Christ. And again, I didn't go as far because I'm being refined by the fire. I'm not exempt from trials. I'm not exempt from tribulations. And most of the time, when I have trials and tribulations, it's because I was in my flesh and it was because I made mistakes. And the Lord is like, if you're walking by the Spirit, and if you're walking with me, you will have peace. Your enemies will be at peace with you because you're not feeding the flesh. So then I continue to walk with the Lord. And being refined by the fire is being able to humble yourself, being able to be like a small child who the Lord, being your only teacher, your only shepherd, that you're open to his spiritual bread to give you more wisdom so your load, your yoke gets lighter and lighter. So when you come across um, stumbling blocks and you come across um, obstacles or you were in your flesh at some moment that the Lord is like, look, you know, being in your flesh, you're going to have um, a bit of a headache because you're opening the door, giving a welcome mat to the Antichrist spirit, which again, I still make mistakes today, not as many as I used to. I don't stray like very far one way or the other because I've learned from the mistakes. I've repented and um, don't go back to making the same ones. Don't go back to um, my vomit, so to speak. Like, look, I already choked on that. <laughs> I already felt the burn from that mistake. Am I going to touch the fire again? And no, you, you're like, I don't want to have those problems anymore. I don't want to um, continue to feel heartache 
and have a headache unnecessarily that the Antichrist spirits roaming around like a lion looking to devour you. First devouring you spiritually. And once you open that door, that welcome mat to the Antichrist spirit, that that spirit can devour you emotionally, mentally, and physically. Okay? It starts spiritually. You're spiritually sick. That you need his Holy Spirit to be at peace. No matter what situation is thrown at you, your yoke is light and you don't have any enemies. You know that the only enemy is the darkness, the lies, the Antichrist spirit. No one in the flesh is your enemy. No one. And if they are attacking you, they're, be, they're being driven by another spirit. Okay? And you need to cling to Christ and not be a man pleaser. Again, I'm not exempt from making mistakes, even today. The difference is, all glory to the Lord, He has mercy upon me that I, ha I feel guilt when I do something wrong. I feel convicted and I make it right with Christ. So the tares, now's the hour of temptation. So the tares are being gathered. I would suggest if you're following a group of people, a ministry, a community, and you're putting your trust in man, I'd reconsider it because most likely that group are tares because we're called a remnant for a reason. Remnant also means remaining and residual. I wrote this down. Let me get this piece of paper really quick. <laughs> I wrote this definition down that residual means remaining after the greater part or quantity has gone. Other similar words is left over and unconsumed. We're called the remnant for a reason, not because we follow a group of people, but because we're walking with the Lord and the Lord only. So I hope I plant a good seed. I love you and God bless.